IDBM Challenge, Season 1, Episode 3. You know, education is not really about following the rules or finding the, the right answers. Um, it's more about becoming aware of your bubble and bursting those. And in this episode, uh, we spoke with Jani Leinonen about bursting bubbles and in general being uh, disobedient. Enjoy! Hello! Welcome to uh, another episode of Yellow Vacuum Cleaner. We are here with um, Jani Leinonen in his studio. Thanks for having us. Hey, thanks. I didn't know this was the topic, but it's cool. <laughs> Surprise! <laughs> yes. <laughs> um, for those of us, or for those viewers who don't know who you are, um, could you briefly uh, introduce yourself? Yeah, well, well I'm an artist. Uh, I make political pop art, but I don't know, there's not really like a... It's a pretty vague description of what I do. Sometimes it's, I guess, a little bit activist stuff on the other hand, but then on the other side, there's also just like nice paintings that I want to make and, and I just paint them. So there's not necessarily always a big political idea behind the works. Yeah, yeah. So it's kind of, a, I don't know, we human beings do a lot of different kinds of things and maybe sometimes they're even contrary stuff, but maybe I'm more known of the political stuff than, than the rest of Hmm. How do, when did you like kind of, if we backtrack a bit, when did you realize that this was like kind of, I don't know if it's your calling or... What, art? Yeah. I did don't know. Yeah, really young. I mean, I was like eight or six years old. Of course, I didn't know what art was then. But, but, but that's, I thought it was something cool and, uh, and it was really, really conservative art that I kind of admired back then. But still, you know, I mean, uh, since there's a lot of, uh, I mean, if, if my looks, my art looks like this. <coughs> so I, I think when I was eight years old, I was drawing similar looking things, you know, <laughs> everything that I saw around me, posters, movie posters and advertisements and stuff like that. I wasn't really thinking anything else, but they were just like interesting visually, but, but I mean, I guess, I'm actually doing the same stuff, mm. but maybe you know the content or the taking a stand or the values have sort of developed after, since, since I was eight. <laughs> At least I hope. What what is some topics that fascinates you right now, or what is going on in in your work? Oh, God, difficult questions. I don't know. Well. Of course, you know, you, you read the news, you follow the conversations in social media, so there's a lot of stuff, I guess, like there's, well, like ethical, ecological things, but, but I guess, well, because it's so up-to-date and terrible and also kind of depressing debate uh, uh, about like how racist the world or, or society still is. And um, I think it's sort of my own standing point. It's maybe it's like the white privilege that I, I have, and we are all, all of us white people have in a society that's kind of a build focusing on on white people's interests and, and a kind of a, how do I say the, the 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 general population. So it's it's kind of a. I don't know, I guess they're a little bit reflected. I guess white privilege as a word, it's like uh, everybody kind of, uh, especially us white liberal people, I don't know mm. how liberal you guys are, but <laughs> kind of agree with it and it's there, but then then it's like you, especially in like your Facebook page discussions, you end up, you know, all these white friends of yours just like kind of, a, denying it. I mean, I started like, yes, I 
I know it's there, but and then they start mm -hmm. you know, kind of diminishing it and, and, and saying like, you know, I'm like poor and I don't have privileges and stuff like that. So it's it's kind of a, oh no, it's interesting, I guess the kind of the real phenomenon behind or what I'm interested in is actually the 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 way that, well, maybe it's actually about this, like the truth that hurts or the lie that comforts. So it's kind of this, uh, how people explain the bad things, especially if they're themselves involved away with like, maybe it's not white privilege, maybe it's something else. And maybe it's, you know, like, I, I'm like, I, I'm not a racist and I've ne never said anything bad about it. So I don't have white privilege. So it's like this, all this kind of a mess of explanation going on around the, which is like the lie mm. that comforts in a way, but the, the ugly truth behind it is that, you know, well, of course we white people are very privileged. Mm. Mm. And isn't it also so that, you know, we are being con conditioned to this, like on a daily basis? Yeah, yeah, I mean, it's of course like <coughs> when all your friends are white and especially if you don't know any minority members of minorities you don't really you have no idea what it is because you only see the white white life and you know you're born and trained and educated in white schools and, mm. and the history mm. is written by the white people celebrating the white inventors and, and historical figures so it's kind of this uh, yeah it's like a really mm. big bubble that kind of closes everything else out so it's difficult to burst also so if that's the change you want to participate in, how do you, uh, how can you make the world a better place, having that as the background? <laughs> <laughs> not a, not a <laughs> yeah, I have a short answer to that. Okay, I will tone the no, no. question down a bit. <laughs> no, 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 it's, it's fine, we can talk about it, but it's a long talk. Yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, I, I guess like, uh, it, it's... Uh, how, how would you say? Uh, I mean, like as artists, I can mostly talk about from my perspective because that's what I know. Also, us like we're we're kind of educated as these. Uh, well, it's kind of the art world like focused around the artists, so we're in a way these like weird heroes, or we're kind of you know trained to be these heroes and sort of saviors and we have like we can talk about everything especially like us white uh, straight men who are artists so it's uh, there it's I guess it's kind of been a, a serious look in the mirror also to kind of realize that you know why do I have this you know idea that I can talk about like a specialist about like every topic even though I have like no clue about it and um, so it's kind of, maybe that's like, once you realize that you, you have to burst your own bubble and kind of, you know, try to look outside of it and talk to different kinds of people, and then you, I guess, start realizing that maybe I'm not a specialist in everything and maybe I should be culturally sensitive to, to you know, all sorts of directions and maybe we should have like a diversity in also like creating things. Because that's like, I mean, how I, like get ideas is to talk to as like diverse people as possible and you know you kind of get their dis their perspective and uh, and then you know they just melt and then maybe something good comes out of it but i guess this kind of a white savior idea which quite often happens <coughs> especially in the west we we kind of we want to save the africa and collect money and we we without even realizing it kind of uh how would i say at least victimize like other cultures you know like you know well like think about mm -hmm. charity organizations like when they design their campaigns it's always the suffering african even though there's like the truth is totally something else it's mm -hmm. not like yeah. poor and it's not suffering and it's not it's um i mean the there's a lot of suffering white people here too, but they're not shown in the in the pictures. So it's kind of because it's really about like media representations, media pictures, and everything that I basically work with. So it's kind of 
I mean, trying to be critical about it, I know I always have, but like recently I've actually realized that there's so many blind spots that you just you know, can't kind of overcome until you actually talk to somebody who, who is... So what has recently <laughs> burst your bubble, as you said earlier? Oh, I, well, <laughs> well, this is really personal, but I'm going to say it anyway. Uh, uh, for a year and a half, I've been uh, in a relationship with uh, a, a Roma girl. So that's, that's like, I guess, one of the kind of biggest, well, biggest realizations when you actually start dating and loving somebody who's from a different culture. But yet she's, she's Finnish. She was Finnish Roma, and you know, they're like the kind of most, how would I say, intolerated minority group in Finland. So mm. you kind of start seeing things from her perspective and how the, like, how, how, like, all the media representations of Finnish Roma are like written and played by white actors and creators so they're all these like they're comedy characters and they're repeating mm -hmm. the stereotypes that they're criminals and mm -hmm. hustling horses and cars and stuff like that which is like a like this weird uh, fiction that's created by the white majority about this this one minority that's been you know kicked in the head for 500 years mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Wow. so it's like you kind of you're know, like fuck like that's you know what i was really I grew up with and I all know I know all the jokes and I know all the I can speak like a gypsy you know with this Petalius style and so it's mm -hmm. but it's like it's got nothing to do with, with how the real Roma speaks so it's kind of just this kind of weird white fantasy of a, of a minority which is crazy and it's only now that I realize it so our mm. students they're actually going to work in multidisciplinary teams yeah. Or not just multidisciplinary, multicultural teams. Do you have some advice or something you would like them to, or how they can work better together, or questions they should ask each other, or something that can better help them in a multicultural setting? Well, I, I don't know. <laughs> I guess... Uh, what? The fact that they're working together is great, and yeah. I think that resolves a lot of problems. So, well, I don't know. I, I guess uh, just listening to each other about that stuff and kind of not think that you're the one who knows better. Mm -hmm. So, but yeah, I don't know. I think once if it is a diverse group, I think that's already a, a great thing. Mm -hmm. So, oh, mm. I don't think there's like a... A one correct yeah. answer mm. for a way to yeah. go. Through. Yeah, it depends so much <laughs> like what it is. It's what's the project about and what, what are the aims. Mm. I guess like one of the kind of sickest ideas is this companies and different kind of organizations talking about <coughs> sustainable growth, which I think is, a, is an awful paradox in a way. Like how can growth be sustainable with like limited resources? Yeah. Well, there's the zero growth idea, but uh, I guess the problem with with many of these like uh, new economics ideas is that it's like a because for so long, no matter has it been like a Cold War or era ideology for uh, like communism or capitalism, both sides kind of believed in the growth, mm -hmm. so it wasn't mm -hmm. like a, it wasn't an ideological sort of a thing back then, and everybody just you know. Both sides wanted ideologically also like internal growth, but back then nobody realized that you know what happens like or that the resources are limited. But I think the biggest problem is that like what do you do when the does every all the business ideas and theories are based on the growth, so nobody really there's no theories on like uh, what happens to society when you know when you have zero growth because it's mm. like there's just yeah. no I mean that's a depression and everybody's right now everybody's just trying to get rid of that mm -hmm. so it's it, that's sort of like a no man zone uh, theoretically and practically 
at this point. So I think that's where the kind of studies would need to be like how would you yeah, how would you actually mm. create it in a way that it, it would be sustainable? Do you have any ideas? No, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I mean it's okay if you don't want to reveal them. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, we get it, we get it. Yeah, yeah. The book's coming out next next year. <laughs> the serious stuff now. Oh, oh these weren't serious. No, no, that was just the, the pre pre. Oh, oh okay. So, it's like warm up. Yeah. I am D B. I M D B. That's the like a movie database. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I, I use it quite a lot. I don't have like the, I don't pay for it, but it's, it's a, uh, that's kind of cool. I don't know much about it. Why are you asking? Okay, so the next word is IDBM. Okay, which, so which one, uh, <laughs> did I confuse it? <laughs> no, you, you were spot on. I don't know what that is. What is it? So we need to change that. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> that is our program. Oh, oh, okay. Design. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's that. That was funny. Yeah, yeah. You should make the logo the same. <laughs> hey, oh, hey. That's what I mean. copy, yeah. copy with pride. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's an honor, right? In yeah. Indonesia. Yeah. yeah. Copy. That, that was it. Okay, can I add, add one now, like randomly? Mm. Okay, art. Art. <laughs> <laughs> and you put so, that needle there. Yeah. 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 I don't. I don't. Uh, even I don't know what it is, so it's uh, it's it's something bad. It's something good, you know. It's kind of, well, I guess it's like technology too, you know. Whatever you use it for, it it can be a tool for evil things or or good things. Do you want the truth that hurts or the lie that comforts? Yeah. yeah. Success. Uh, I think we have too many successful people. Not <laughs> <laughs> okay. Business. It's a blank. That's that's interesting. Well, cereal. Oh, oh. You said I could say it just <laughs> where yeah, yeah, yeah. oh, I, I take that easy way out. That was good. Innovation. Oh my god, that's such a horrible... <laughs> that's like a... Oh, I, I mean, it's such a cliche that I don't even want to start talking about it anymore. <laughs> so we're not going to add it to I am innovative. Innovation and other cliches. <laughs> All the, all, the, all the bullshit we know. <laughs> yeah. Space. Final frontier. Technology. Hmm. Yeah, it's 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 like a two-bladed sword. It's really interesting. I mean, I'm fascinated about like new inventions and new technology. But yet. I guess the stuff that I said previously, it's like a, it, it also troubles, because it's not neutral. It's always, it's always like a biased in a way. Hmm. Strategy. Strategy. <laughs> I don't have one. <laughs> Perfect. Um, design. That's not a trendy word. Innovation designs probably you get money from all the grand applications. What else? <laughs> what are what are there? <laughs> but design here. design is always it's also uh, it, it's sort of a, I think of it as a it, it's a tool for political control too. Design. Yeah, yeah. designing mm -hmm. things. Of course, you control. Uh, you know, people's everyday surroundings by designing them to look a certain way or... Well, designs are, of course, used quite a lot mm -hmm. to, for instance, increase the consumerism and, and other things. You're going meta level, yeah. <laughs> yeah, but I think design, like, that's one of the first things comes to, that comes to my mind. It's like a... it, it is tool for power. Mm -hmm. Mm. Okay, so, future. <laughs> Let's go back. <laughs> oh. 
<laughs> yeah, well, whatever. It's it's. Can't wait for it. <laughs> <laughs>